Power Display Elephants were used in warfare in South Asia as far back as the first millennium BC and were known to be protected with armors from the 11th century AD. A huge 17th century elephant armor stands today at the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds, England. It's the largest animal armor known to be on display in a public collection worldwide. The materials in armors put on elephants varied from padded fabric and leather to metallic mail and plates. The huge mammals participated in combat until the 19th century. The powerful creatures could carry crews of armed soldiers on their backs, away from foot warriors. A manut, or driver, could steer the animal with a goad. But elephants were more than mobile war platforms. When properly trained, they became devastating weapons. Using their incomparable strength, elephants could fight against humans and horses, trampling on the enemies or lifting and throwing them away with their trunks. Moreover, they were usually equipped with specially forged tusk swords, sturdy metal weapons that would become lethal with the charging elephant behind them. Reinforced sockets were fitted in the previously shortened tusks and securely strapped. It's believed that the reinforced blades could pierce through almost anything that came their way on the battlefield. It is not known who crafted the armor on display at the Royal Armouries Museum. Its structure of mail and plates was widely used in Muslim states in North and Central India. Still, the motifs of peacocks and lotus blooms suggest it may have been forged in a Hindu area. It is also believed that the armor relates to southern India, as it was acquired by the wife of the governor of Madras, Lady Henrietta Clive, between 1798 and 1801. She then brought it back to Britain. The colossal armor is a reminder of the sheer power of elephants used in battles, and still leaves spectators from all over the world in utter awe. Rocket Cats At least half a dozen 16th century manuscripts show cats being propelled with what appear to be jetpacks. The manuscripts, kept at the University of Pennsylvania Library, also show some birds strapped to them. It's believed that this method involved attaching lit sacks of incendiaries into small animals' backs before letting them go and potentially setting fire to a specific target. The illustrations come from ancient warfare manuals that detail using explosives in military tactics. However, between the 16th and 17th centuries, the manuscripts were copied and altered several times. Franz Helm of Cologne, the originator of this macabre idea, was an artillery master under the service of several German princes. It's believed he was also likely serving in campaigns against Turkish forces during the mid-16th century. His manuscript, Buch von den Probierten Künsten, was a treatise on siege warfare and artillery. It was published in print in 1625 and widely circulated. The document shows texts accompanying the whimsical and almost cheerful illustrations with the title, To Set Fire to a Castle or City Which You Can't Get At Otherwise. The author details the use of flammable devices fitted onto small animals to set fire to enemy positions. Mitch Frass from the University of Pennsylvania translates, quote, Create a small sack like a fire arrow, bind the sack to the back of the cat, ignite it, and thereafter let the cat go, so it runs to the nearest castle or town, and out of fear, it thinks to hide itself, where it ends up in barn hay or straw, it will be ignited. It is unknown whether the strategy was actually used, but versions of this idea appear in many historical texts from places such as Russia and ancient South Asia, and even in the Bible. Pigeon Photographers Homing pigeons were used as early as 3000 BC, and they were bred for their ability to find their way back to a specific location using magnetoreception. Still, it wasn't until 1907 that pigeon photography was invented, proving a useful resource during the two world wars. Early experiments in aerial photography took place in the mid to late 1800s using balloons and kites. Jules Neubronner, a German apothecary, used homing pigeons for medication delivery. On one occasion, a pigeon went missing for four days and returned perfectly well-fed. The apothecary then came up with the idea of tracing the bird's path with a camera. What started as a playful idea became a breakthrough. After performing tests in a train and a sled, Neubronner developed a lightweight miniature camera that could be fitted with an aluminum breast harness. A pneumatic system controlled the time delay before the picture was taken, and a special dovecote was used to accommodate the creatures. 
The technique met some resistance, but was finally patented in 1908 and showcased a year later at the Dresden International Photographic Exhibition. The self-built photographer would sell his pictures as postcards at aviation exhibitions and even at the Paris Air Show. The military eventually became interested in this method to use for aerial reconnaissance. Several encouraging tests were carried out on battlefields during World War I, but the advancements in aviation technology quickly took over and Neubrunner abandoned his work. The German and French armies resurrected the project at some point. War pigeons were commonly used during World War II, but it's unknown whether they were employed for aerial reconnaissance or just message deliveries. There were always issues with training the birds and controlling the angle of the pictures. The Central Intelligence Agency also developed a battery camera to be used with pigeons for espionage purposes, but to this day, the details remain classified. Attack Dogs A 1529 manuscript known as the Coyoacan Codex depicts Hernán Cortés and his interpreter Marina staring at a prisoner being assaulted by a mastiff. The image was used by the Indians to condemn and denounce Spanish brutality, with a Mayan priest expressly describing how the dogs destroyed his people's faces. Attack dogs have been employed throughout history by the Egyptians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans, among others. Dogs were used as messengers, sentinels, or trackers, but they were also trained for actual combat. Huge, mastiff-like breeds were often strapped with armor or spiked collars and sent to battle. Upon returning from the Indies, Christopher Columbus had found docile tribes and didn't require attack dogs like those employed during warfare in Europe. But Juan Rodriguez de Fonseca, Archdeacon of Seville and personal chaplain to the king, still provided him with 20 purebred mastiffs and greyhounds in 1493. Hernán Cortés then brought his own group of fighter dogs in 1519 from Havana to Veracruz, Mexico, but the exact number is unknown. However, the hounds played a key role in subduing native populations during the conquest and even years later. The word dogging was used frequently. It referred to one of many techniques used to inflict justice upon the natives. Bartolomé de las Casas, a friar sympathetic to the indigenous tribes, recalled how Spaniards would usually say, quote, lend me a quarter of an Indian to give my dogs some meat until I kill one next. Anti-Cavalry Cavalry In the mid-19th century, an American military unit was captivated by the idea of using camels as pack animals and even cavalry. Secretary of War Jefferson Davis believed camels would be helpful to the army in the southern states, especially in the region's desert-like terrains. Camels proved superior to horses and mules in several ways. They could carry over 600 pounds of weight, survive several days without water, and feed on desert plants. They could also run short distances at 40 miles per hour or keep a steady pace of 25 miles per hour for as long as an hour. They were also sure-footed and could travel in extreme weather conditions. Camel cavalry is known to have been used as far back as 853 BC and became vital during desert warfare in the Middle East. More than a means of transportation, warriors could fight from camelback using spears, bows, and eventually rifles. The Persian, Roman, and Arabian forces all employed camels. Napoleon's army also used them as part of its strategy, and they even served a minor role during the Spanish Civil War. In 1855, Congress listened to Jefferson Davis and approved $30,000 to experiment with using camels for cavalry in the United States. Major Henry C. Wayne traveled the world and brought back dozens of the finest camels he could find. The American Camel Corps did well for a while, especially in the harsh weather conditions of Texas and Arizona. Edward Fitzgerald Beale even claimed one camel was worth four fine mules. But the camel's appearance and smell are known to frighten horses, alarming and disorienting the mounts they even became a convincing anti-cavalry weapon. But the strategy had no future, as soldiers would much rather deal with horses and mules than camels, given some of their most distinctive traits, their stubbornness and tantrums. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channels for more historical anecdotes and stories.